great time praising Jesus, and now we're ready to get to our memory verse. Do you know that the Bible, God's Word, is a lot like a love letter from Jesus to us? So, I got a mailbox here. Let's see if he sent us something. He did! Look! It's to me, which means it's to you, too. And it's from God. The Bible is God's letter to us, and we have a special verse, a special letter to memorize. It's our memory verse. I'll read it. It says, Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. That is an important verse to remember. Let's say it together, and I'll do the actions with you. Ready? God, let me hear you. God is our refuge. That's like a tower to run to. And strength. He's always ready to help in times of trouble. Psalms 46, 1. That is such a good one to remember. And you know, that happened to me a long time ago when I was on a road trip with my family. We were almost out of gas. We'd forgotten to check our gas tank. And when we looked, it was only a few miles left before our gas was going to run out. And so we prayed, our whole family prayed, and we turned off the air, and we turned off everything except for the car, and we looked for a gas station, and like the last mile, we found a gas station. But that was how God, when we prayed, he was our strength, and he helped us in time of trouble, and he will help you in time of trouble too. And you know, he'll help Tala. She's our friend in Jericho that we pray for a lot. She'll help, he'll help her in time of trouble too. So I'm going to pray for all of us, and then I'm going to tell you what our lesson is about. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you are our refuge. You're our tower. You're our strength when we're in trouble. And you are all-powerful, and we can trust you. I pray right now that you would help Tala and her family and the people in Jericho, that you would also be her strength, and our strength, and that we would all come to know you better. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, what's next? Do you remember what's next? It's time to see what's in our trunk. What's our clue? Okay, here's my trunk. I wonder what's inside today. Can you help me open it? Let's say one, two, three, open. Ready? Open. Let's see. Hmm, do you know what this is? Whoa, look at that. That's fire. I wonder what fire has to do with our story today. Do you know what fire does? Fire burns things up and leaves nothing behind it. You have to be careful with fire. It can be dangerous. It can be helpful, too. I wonder what it has to do with our story today. Hmm, let's find out. It's time for God's Epic Bible Story. Hey guys, so I'm going to hold up some things to you to help us remember about our story. First of all, first off, what's this? It's a Bible, and I marked it with my cupcake marker. Let me open it. To our story today, because later on, maybe you would want to go back and read it again with your parents, or if you have a big brother or sister. It's called The Burning Bush. Now, I got some things right here as well to help us remember last week's story. And maybe you can look at it and think, I know what this is about. First off, do you remember the baby? I'm going to hold up my baby. Do you remember the baby that was born? Do you remember his name? Mm, Moses. Yeah, that's right. And remember how that evil, bad Pharaoh king did not want Moses and all the other Hebrew boy babies to live? So the super brave mom and very crafty, what did she build? She built a basket, and she put this tar sticky stuff inside so she could send her precious baby boy in the basket, in the Nile River, floating down the river 
escaping alligators and all those things while his sister Miriam looked in the bushes to see what would happen. And then the princess, the daughter of Pharaoh, found the basket, found Moses, and went, and they ended up having Moses' mom take care of the baby. So we're starting back the story today where Moses is no longer a little baby, but he's grown up and he's back in the palace. And you think that he has a job to do that would be mm, maybe taken over for Pharaoh when he grows up, he'd be the new Pharaoh. That's what he thought. But do you know what? As often happens, God had other plans. So that is our heart of the lesson today, is that God has a plan for you, just like he had a plan for Moses. So let's look up. God has a job for you. God has a job for you, just like he had for Moses. So we're going to watch this video and see what special plan, special job that God had for Moses. Stories of the Bible, Moses and the Burning Bush. This is Moses. Hello. Moses was an Israelite boy born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a special plan for Moses. Oh, eh? And he spent his childhood in the palace of the Pharaoh. You see, when Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh oh Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, and he tried to have Moses killed. Ah! So Moses ran away from Egypt. He stopped in the land of Midian. Ah. And seven sisters came to the well to give water to their father's flock. Some shepherds came to drive them away. Hey, you. But Moses stood up for the women. Hey. Hey, now these sisters were the daughters of the Midianite priest named Jethro. When Jethro heard what Moses did for his daughters, he sent for Moses. So Moses came to live among the Midianites, and he married Zipporah, one of Jethro's daughters. Huh? Meanwhile, back in Egypt, the old pharaoh died, but he was replaced by a new pharaoh who continued to treat the Israelites poorly. Ah oh, man! The Israelites cried out to God because of the terrible things that the Pharaoh made them do. God heard these people and knew it was time to act. One day, Moses was tending Jethro's flock when an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses through a burning bush that would not burn up. Oh. Moses stopped to look at the bush and he heard the voice of God say, Moses, Moses. Hello? God then told Moses how sad he was because of the suffering of his people. He told Moses, that he wanted to do something about it, and he wanted Moses to be the one to do it. Oh, man. But Moses did not think he was the right person to go. God said, I will be with you. Uh, all right. But Moses said that he wouldn't know the right thing to say to the people. So God said to tell the people that God himself had sent him and promised Moses that his plan would be fulfilled through Moses. But Moses still said to God that he did not think the people would believe him. So God said, what is that in your head? Oh. Moses said, a staff. God told Moses to throw it on the ground. Wow, okay. Then God told Moses to catch it. God showed Moses another sign huh? and told him to show these signs to the people if they did not believe what he said. Moses still didn't think he would have the right words to say. But God said 
that he himself was the one who made a man's mouth and gave him the ability to speak, so there was no need to worry. Yet even after all this, Moses said, God, please send someone else. Then God got mad at Moses oops, and said that he would send Moses' brother Aaron to speak for Moses. So Moses went back to his father-in-law and told him that he needed to go back to Egypt. Moses and his family started their journey back to Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand, for this staff would be the tool God would use to demonstrate his awesome power to the Israelites and to the Egyptians. Wow, that was a really cool video. And the coolest thing is that it's all true. It really happened. Did you notice the clue? In the Bible, did you? I'm in the video. Did you notice it? What was on fire? Yeah, it was that bush that was on fire. But what was the really crazy thing about the bush? It didn't burn up. It kept burning and burning and burning because God was in the bush, and God told Moses from that bush what his special job was. Do you remember what his job? Because remember, God has a job for you and for Moses. Yeah, that job was that he wanted Moses to go back and rescue all his people. Did Moses want to do it? Was he excited? No, he was really scared. He thought that he wasn't the right guy for the job and he didn't know what to say. And Do you ever feel that way? That maybe you're too small and maybe the job is too big? But do you think that God will protect you and God will show you and God will give you the strength? He will. And just like we're going to watch how Moses, he trusted God. And even though he was scared and even though he didn't know he could do it, he said, okay, God, I'll obey. I'll do the job you gave me to do. Do you know God wants you to do that? And you can too. You know, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for me because God has a job for me to do too. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for everyone that's listening. I pray, God, that you would help him say yes to the job that you have for him or her to do. Just like Moses said yes, even though he was scared. Thank you, Jesus, that you give us the strength to do it. And like our memory verse says, you're always here in times of trouble. Amen. Okay, let's go check on our review questions. Okay, here are our review questions. What is the heart of the lesson today? God has a job for you. And who was our story about? Moses. That's the answer for the whole month. What unusual thing did Moses see when he was out in the desert? A burning bush that didn't ever burn up. And what did God tell Moses his job was? What job did he have to do? Yeah, go rescue the people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now here's another question. What job do you think God might have for you to do? I think that's a great one to talk with your mom and dad about. What job might God want you to do? You know, he always wants you to talk to him and he always wants you to read his Bible. But what else? Is there someone that needs help? Or, I don't know, just ask God and he'll show you. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is if you go to visitgracekids.com, there is a fun sheet that you can download, print off, color to remember our story, and then maybe even put this on your refrigerator or something. God has a job for, and you should put your name because God has a job for you. All right, guys, we'll see you next week.